Ascension hospitals are still dealing with that ransomware attack that's impacting facilities across the country. Ascension says its facilities are still open and seeing patients, but those patients may have longer wait times and they'll likely see their doctors and nurses using paper charts instead of digital. Patients are asked to bring notes on their symptoms and prescription bottles if they need a refill. Ascension also says it's not accepting credit cards, but they can accept copay and cash. So joining us live now to continue this discussion is Scott Bailey, an IT security expert with N1 Discovery. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you. So we were talking in the break about the fact that this seems to keep happening every few months with some major industries. What are your thoughts on this latest issue? It's um, it's just a sign of where the companies are and the fact that cybersecurity and the controls are just not where they need to be. Um, now, granted, it only takes one small little mistake um, for a company to make for the uh, hackers to get in, but they are doing it on a regular basis. So what is happening right now with Ascension? I mean, is there a way to fight back and to really win against these hackers, or is it essentially just a negotiating process of paying off the attackers. Well, right now, I mean, Ascension has confirmed that it was a ransomware attack, mm -hmm. um, and sources have also said it was a threat actor group called Black Basta. So there, there's a lot of things going on. I'm sure Ascension is, first of all, trying to figure out if they have systems that are encrypted, which they obviously do, they're down. Um, you know, do they have backups? Can they get these systems back up and running, or did the threat actors destroy the backups, or maybe the backups just aren't working? Um, so they're trying to figure that out, which is going to lead into, do they need to pay the ransom? Well, wow. as, as technology continues to advance, it seems like we're moving further into the digital space, and that's just the norm. How could something like this even happen, and what can these companies do to keep this sort of thing from occurring? You know, a lot of these um, attacks are, are really um, low tech. Um, it's literally somebody clicking on a malicious email, clicking on a link, and malicious software gets downloaded to the machine that opens the door to the threat actors. Um, or it's the threat actors contacting the company's IT help desk and social engineering them, convincing them that they're an employee and getting a password reset or getting a new factor, uh, new multi-factor authentication code set. And then they're off to the races. They're in your system and they could be in there for weeks before the ransomware is launched. You know, we've had so many conversations at this point with um, other IT experts like yourself, and it seems like somewhat frequently companies are just paying the ransom. I mean, in the war uh, against ransomware attackers, are we losing? Um, I think we are losing. It, it's, it's a, um, right now it's a never ending battle. Um, the hackers are getting much more sophisticated. There's more organizations um, than ever. Black Basta, for example, uh, really was first seen just in, I think it was April of 22. So they're fairly new as a threat group, right? Um, and I think they've already posted something like data for up to, I think it's over 500 companies already wow. that, they, that they just that one group has infiltrated. Wow. What kind of risks does this pose as we continue? Because, you know, we're not going to go backwards in the technology. This is the standard for so many different industries. Yep. It's, um, well, I mean, we've got to figure out, uh, unfortunately, cybersecurity is really an all or nothing, right? And we're seeing that a lot of the companies do not have the all security in place. There's some weakness somewhere. There's some, some crack in their, their security armor that is allowing these threat actors to get in, you know? And until those things get resolved, we're just going to continue to see this. So it seems like a lot of responsibility here rests on the shoulders of these massive companies. Down to the individual level, is there anything people can really do? It seems like a lot of us are just kind of desensitized now. You get an email, a letter in the mail, you've been compromised. What else is new? Yes. I, I mean, from, from our standpoint, uh, you know, as the people, it's, it's your data is probably out there. It's just how many times and how much and how often. Hmm. Um, from the employee standpoint, it is being vigilant, right? And trying not to, trying to identify those suspicious emails. Yes, we have technology to um, deal with those spam mail and deal with the malicious email, but every time we improve that technology, the hackers then figure a way around it, you know? So we keep getting them. They also prey on us at the, at the most vulnerable times. You see a lot of um, hacking going on, guess what, around, April 15th, tax day, right? So a lot of malicious emails come out just before then trying to get people to fall for it. 
Um, same way with holidays, Valentine's Day, Christmas. You know, they know when people um, are, are stressed or not focused and they're getting hit with emails and they click on them. Where do you see this ending? Right now, I don't. You know, we're, we're, um, we have uh, multiple um, incidences that we manage for our clients ongoing right now on a consistent basis where it's either a ransomware attack or a mailbox breach, um, something's going on, or uh, we're negotiating um, with the threat actors to get the ransom reduced, um, to get the decryption keys, all those type of things. So it, it's right now I don't see an end. This is daunting, a little disturbing, and nerve-wracking going forward. But yes. we thank you for coming by and giving us some perspective on all of well, it. Well, thank you. Thanks so much for joining us. This is Scott Bailey.